guys so let's get to this face as you can see, it's cleared up a lot. I've still got a lot of acne scars and texture on my skin. So I'm going to show you how to clear, like how to cover those up and make your like your foundation look really natural. Not cakey looking and full and like ugh and not feel disgusting either. So I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks on how to get that. So, so as per usual, I always, always, always cleanse and moisturize my face before I do any foundation look because I do want it to sit as smoothly and as seamlessly as possible with all the texture and things going on in my skin and the acne, you know, healing up. I can get a lot of flakiness and dryness because the scabs are healing over. So I've cleansed and moisturized so it's nice and smooth and plump and all that good stuff. So I'm going to move on and prime and I want to use a primer that's going to like, you know, I kind of make my pores look smaller, give an overall kind of smoothness and soften the texture up and definitely get rid of this redness on my skin from the scarring and the acne healing up. So I'm going to go in with my Urban Decay Self Adjusting Complexion Primer. This primer is fantastic because it will help you give an overall smooth photoshopped look to your face. So bear with me today guys, the lighting I believe will change in and out because there is a few clouds in the sky and it is hella windy today, like it is blowing a gale out there. <laughs> so I just do a pump of that and that is more than enough and I'm just applying it to the centre of my face and working out because there's plenty of product when you do a pump so you don't need heaps and just massage it into your skin. You can use a stippling brush if you want, but my hands are clean and the fingers are the best tools. And you can just see that already forming, like it's already created like a Photoshop look. My pores are smaller and smoother. My complexion, it, like the redness is just like, boom, gone. This primer is also good for oil control because it controls the shine. So if you guys like, if you're having acne, you usually tend to have more oily skin so it's good for that as well it will control that oily greasy look as well during the day it's also good because it's not that kind of silicone pore filling kind of primer that you can tend to get i don't like those because they feel really uncomfortable on the skin this one just feels really lightweight smooth and it's not going to be uncomfortable to wear during the day and it doesn't look thick either on the skin so because i have acne as you guys can see i'm going to go in with a more full coverage medium to full coverage foundation and i'm really liking this covergirl ready set gorgeous fresh complexion oil free foundation this already in general is just fantastic. It's more medium to full coverage, like I said. It's not getting got the It's not got any oil in it, so it's not going to, you know, clog up the pores and everything like that. A little side note, guys, if you do have a water-based primer and you're using an oil foundation, that is going to cause your foundation to separate from your skin and have that really like broken up kind of mask kind of look when it sits on your face you always want to make sure that you're using a water-based primer with a water-based foundation or an oil-based primer with an oil-based foundation you guys can just look in the ingredients to check if it's oil or water just letting you know i love this foundation because like i said it's a more medium to full coverage um foundation and it's also super affordable so it's not like you're you know like it's going to cost you an arm and a leg and just creates a nice finish to the skin it's not overly you know dewy it's not too matte it's probably perfect because when you have acne on your skin like i do or even like you know worse it if you have a really dewy finish you know product or if it's really matte it can kind of emphasize the lumps and bumps and texture on our skin so i like just a kind of in between one that's what I found on my skin anyways. Maybe it's different for you. Like, you guys will have your own opinions. And always, like I say in every video, you always, always, always want to make sure you bring it down your neck because a lot of us can tend to be more dark on, you know, our bodies, even on our faces and less on our neck because our neck doesn't see the sunlight. Or if you have fake tan, you might have a lighter face than you do with your neck. So you just want to make sure you're blending it down. So you don't get that mask line look. So to make your foundation look more like natural, you want to use as little amount of product on your forehead as you can and everywhere else in your face. I like to do a thin layer at the beginning, like thinnish layer, and then build up from there because I can always add more foundation to the places that I need it where I'm breaking out, but it's harder to take away 
Just focus more product on where you need it and less product everywhere else and that's going to create a more natural looking finish. And I always find using a beauty sponge or beauty blender the, is the best way to create a more natural finish because it will soak up any excess product for you and it just helps it melt into the skin like the best. I just use whatever excess I have on the sponge and just put it on my lids. So you can still have a bit of redness on my nose and around my eyes and that is totally fine because I'm just going to go in with concealer afterwards. I just want to focus most of the product on the places that I need it. So if you do want to touch up any areas, I can put a bit more coverage on them, put some more foundation but on the back of your hand so that you can control how much you're applying to your face whereas if you've just squeezed it, you know, banged it on your face, it's harder to take it away and just use little pouncing motions. If you're too rough with the application with the sponge then it's just going to disturb the product and it's actually not going to end up sinking into your skin. So I found light dabbing motions to be key. And roll it into the hairline so it fades in and looks more natural. Because I found if I just dab it I can tend to have like a line causing that mask look but if I roll it in it just looks so much more natural. Oh, and if I didn't say it before, I'm in the shade medium beige for any of you who are curious. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. For concealer, I always like to go in with something more natural looking if I am doing a more natural base. I don't want anything too highlighting because it is just going to highlight those imperfections and the breakouts when you try to cover them up afterwards. So I'm going to go in with this Instant Age Rewind Concealer from Maybelline in the shade Medium Moyen or like Medium Beige so it's the same colour as my foundation basically and because I can tend to get under eye creasing I like to just apply a little bit under the eyes and I do it not like actually sitting on the under eye area I apply it just below and do a little triangle like that to cover up any redness that I may have and I can always just blend upwards instead of having to like blend it out under the eye and causing that cakiness look I apply a little dollop on the lids and then I'll do a line down the center of my nose for a bit more full coverage on the nose area and then any other breakouts that I want to cover up I am just going to plonk some of this product on and it's just going to melt into my foundation so seamlessly and not highlight any of those lumps or bumps or texture or redness, you know, anything like that. So with the concealer around my eyes, I just use a beauty sponge. Same with on my nose. But anywhere where I've concealed on the breakouts, I grab a little buffer brush. This is just the Real Techniques Deluxe Crease Brush, but I like the bristles because they're nice and sparse and they're like, um, more, they're good to blend out concealer. And to keep that full coverage kind of um, effect of the concealer, I like to just feather out the edges of my concealer with the brush. So just using light swiping motions to feather out that product and keep that full coverage effect. And this is also the reason why I like to use a concealer the same colour as my foundation almost, basically. <laughs> because... It keeps that more natural feel to the skin and it's not like you have multiple tones going on on your face. That's when it can start to look a bit fake. And it's also a good concealer because it's not so thick and cakey so it'll look more natural on the skin. And that's like kind of what I'm going for. <laughs> Next to set the concealer under the eyes I'm going to go in with a flat beauty sponge so just this is just a chi chi sponge with a flat side to it you guys can use a beauty blender whatever you have i'm going to take this eclipse blur powder i'm just going in with this one because it's good to blur like pores out and stuff like that and what i'm going to do is i'm going to swiggle the, the flat end of the sponge into the product so that's nice and evenly coated like so and i just kind of like get my damp beauty blender and just kind of get rid of any crinkles or like any of that product that might have settled in any fine lines. I just kind of blend that out again. And I just press it under the eyes. Just a thin layer under the eyes. I find this technique 
so good to blur out any pores, to set the concealer in place, but also to stop that cakey looking foundation, which can tend to happen if you have that loose powder just sitting on the skin. And I also do my lids the same way to set them in place. So I am oily, so I am going to set the oily, oily areas of my skin where it tends to get a bit, you know, kind of that greasy look or it can move and break up. Setting it in place by pressing it in will look more natural. So I set around my nose area because I find that it can break up there. And I'll set my forehead very, very lightly. Nothing too crazy. Oh yeah, and I also set my neck as well, guys. And I'll do a light, little, little, little bake, kind of pressing the powder into my skin. Anywhere that I'm going to be applying bronzer. So, just kind of here. And I'll do whatever's left on the sponge on my breakouts. Because when you mattify them very minimally, nothing too crazy, like that loose powder will just look a bit cakey. But when you lightly bake whatever excess there is on your breakouts, it'll make them more matte and make them less obvious. When there's more shine to the face, it's going to attract attention to those texture in the breakouts. But more matte, it'll cause your breakouts to look less obvious on your face. You know, that's just kind of the rule of thumb, I guess, in makeup. So there we go, we've set the plate, the place. Ah, we've set our face in place now. So I'm going to do a little technique. I think you might have seen it in, hold on a sec. You might have seen this in a few of my other videos where I grab a setting spray. You can use whatever setting spray that you have. And I'm just going to lightly mist that over my face to really lock that product in that we've just applied. And also help the product to look more skin-like on the face rather than just... You know, it's sitting on top. It's going to help it melt into the skin and become one. So it looks more natural. If, it, if you do find there's any cakiness to the face, it's just going to help eradicate that too so it looks more natural. And just by fanning it in, it's really going to help that product activate and really cling to any excess powder. You know, anything that may be causing your face to look a little bit cakey at this stage, it's just going to help get rid of that. Whilst also locking your product into your face so it's not going to move and it's going to last longer throughout the day as well. Time for the brows. So I'm going to grab my Maybelline Master Brow Pro Palette in the shade Deep Brown and grab that center shade from the palette on an angle brush. This is just from eBay guys, nothing too fancy. And I'm just going to start, you know, carving out my brows. Just kind of giving them a bit of shape. I like to go for a more dramatic brow. If you guys don't, then you do you, boo. You do what your brow routine is for you, hun. And guys, if you ever feel like, oh, you get so frustrated with doing your brows, they don't ever look the same, just keep in mind that they're meant to look like sisters, not like twins. <laughs> that always helps me when I'm carving up my brows. I'm like, they just don't look the exact same. They're never going to. We're just going to have to accept that they're just going to be sisters, not twins. Ha! Huh? Little tip of the day. Okay, puppy. Okay. So next to keep these brow hairs in place so that they're not, you know, moving out of the lines that I've just created right here. We know that our brows are stuck down. And also to give a bit of dimension back to the brow hairs because with the powder it can be quite um, overpowering. So this tinted brow gel in the shade D Dark Brown will help give a bit of dimension back to the hairs and kind of make the brow look more natural, I guess we could say. And what I like to do is I just brush lightly over the hairs firstly making sure to wipe off the wand before you use it because you can get a big clump of product and you don't want that because then you have to kind of kind of work it into the brow it's just a lot more effort so just wipe off the um the wand before you use it on the bottle then to make sure i'm coating each hair and make a fuller looking brow is i comb downwards lightly with the product that's left on the wand and then I'll comb it back up and let my hairs fall, I guess, into their natural place. Some people like to brush up their brows and make that more, like, natural, youthful, bushy-looking brow. But I'm more about that more structured life, I guess we could say. Alright, that is brows done. Next thing is to bronze up the face, give a bit of warmth back to the complexion. So this part isn't really anything different with the products that I'm using, just the application. So if you guys want to stick around and watch this part, then feel free. What did I say? 
why, why would I turn you guys down? Of course you'd want to see it. I hope you would want to see it. So the products that I'm going to be using are the NYX Contour and Highlight Kit. And I'm grabbing the usual tan shade from that kit. I just feel like it gives a nice warmth colour to my face. And I do need to buy some different products. Like I am looking. I'm looking for more natural ones to show you guys. And I'm in the midst of like saving. How dare there be a bit of fluff on this brush. So I just apply a little bit, a little bit, like and I use dabbing motions, so it looks more natural. And to not disturb the foundation or anything like that, if you're swiping you're disturbing it and it's going to move around. And because a lot of us can tend to get acne around this area, I'm using a matte product. You can, if you want to, I guess, use something with a bit of shimmer, a bit of glitter in it, I guess, if you want more of a glow. But do that in your foundation, then, if you want more of a glow. Like, don't use products with shimmer or anything in them, because you will get attention drawn to that area. And because I am still healing up from my acne around this area, I do not want anything to highlight that. I want to look more matte in that area so dabbing motions on the forehead so as I was saying I do want to get more products to show you guys and more natural ones that are beneficial to the skin like I just think that's what it should be about good skincare good skin health so I'm looking for you know different products to show you guys but in the meantime I'm just saving up so I have gotten another job on the side I'm, I'm doing like some teaching so I'm a swim instructor, but I've also just started lifeguarding. I am so excited, guys. I guess like a leveling up kind of thing from swim teaching to lifeguarding. I'm still doing my swim teaching, but I'm also doing lifeguarding for more hours. Ooh, I'm hunched down. But yeah, so I'm really excited. I start next week. I've done the course and everything. And like you have to fill out this booklet and stuff. I did it with Royal Life Saving. So that's what I did it with. But I'm a pool lifeguard. So I'm not a um, beach one. Oh, that would be so cool though. But I'm a pool lifeguard. So I'm really excited. And just for like that more like kind of sun kiss natural look. I always like to kind of just do a little. A little bit of something on the nose. Just a little bit. Huh? Nothing too crazy. And I just kind of blend it out, just softly. And moving on. So now that we've blon br blonzed, bronzed up the complexion with a matte bronzer, we're going to go in with the contour shade from the NYX Contour and Highlight Kit. And it's a nice cool toned brown. So anything matte and cool toned is perfect for contouring. And tap off any excess because it is quite pigmented. I'm just going to hold it close to the bristles and I'm just going to kind of pat. Sock in the cheeks and pat for a natural contour. Just like that so it's really like a soft kind of contour. Well, it's soft for me guys. To contour the nose because I just feel like it's a really vital thing. To me, it's a vital thing to contour my nose because I like to change the shape of it a little bit. <laughs> but you guys can skip this step. So I'm just grabbing that same contour shade. And I am just doing a little, like, um, kind of V-shape on the end of the nose. And then I just make it into, like, a little triangle, if that makes sense. So, basically, all I'm doing is creating a shadow at the bottom of the nose to make it look smaller. Because I'm sneaky like that. And then I follow this little kind of shadow here. And I go back in with my damp beauty blender again. And literally just do the softest pressure and whatever's left on the sponge it kind of just helps it melt into the skin so this part is extremely optional for you guys I'm going to show you guys kind of a technique how to kind of highlight but not emphasize your texture so one way of doing it is grabbing a, a cream highlighter and before doing the powder and everything you want to apply that cream highlighter on, highlighter on the high points of your face and it's going to look more natural and it won't emphasize your texture or acne as much. Or option number two, I'm going to grab this nectar shade right here from the NYX Contour and Highlight Kit. And what I'm going to do, it's a more natural kind of highlight so it's good to just for those subtle days. And if you see, like, let me zoom you in, guys. And if you see, you can just see kind of the texture on my skin. So I don't want to really highlight that. So first of all, I'm going to start from the tail of the brow. 
And I'm just going to kind of be very site specific on where I place this highlighter and use very light motions. So it can be more intense on some places and barely touch it on other places. So there's a highlight there. It's soft, it's subtle, but it's still got... I still like a glow. Like, I don't know, I highlight some of my favorite parts of the face and if I have breakouts, it kind of takes the fun away from it. Like sometimes you just want to glow, you know? So here I haven't got, you know, texture on the top of my face really, so I can be a bit more heavy handed on that highlight, but I won't bring it down anywhere where the texture is. And on my bro on my like brow bone area, there's not there's no breakouts. I'm so blessed that I don't have any acne on my forehead, so I can just highlight away there, highlight my life away. And I have an intense glow there. So basically, guys, you're picking and choosing where you want to highlight. That's why I'm using a little eyeshadow brush. This is the crease brush, the Luxe Crease Brush from Zoeva. And it's a sparse brush, so it's not going to be too intense. It's going to be more natural. For the nose, I have no texture on my nose. So I'm just going to highlight away. So you guys can still highlight places on your face. I'm going to switch to the Mary Luminizer for the nose area because I want a more intense highlight. But if you guys, you can just pick and choose the highlight you want to use, where you want to highlight, because the highlight will emphasize texture in your skin, so I use a more natural highlight on the cheekbones. But on the forehead, I switched to my Mary Lou because I can go for a more intense highlight. So I'm using the Nectar Shade and the Mary Lou to kind of highlight my face. And of course that Cupid's bow. So as you guys can see, there's like a little spot. Oh, you probably can't see. There's a little spot on my chin where I can highlight because there's no texture there. So, woo! But chin areas are usually problematic areas for a lot of people with acne. So you guys can skip that area. Just highlight where you want. I'm just going to bring some highlight. My bod as well. Because who can really get enough highlight? Like, let's be real. But there, see, I've got a bit of a glow. It's very natural on the cheekbones, and it's more intense everywhere else. But you've got that glow that so you don't feel like you can't highlight because you've got acne. You totally can, beautiful. You totally can. But you just got to be more site-specific. Also, I'm not going to add any blush today because blush can attract attention to acne areas, especially because all of us do get it on the cheek area. You guys can wear blush if you want to. I'm not going to wear it today because I want it to be less focused on the acne, more focused on the overall complexion. Okay, done. And if you guys suffer from rosacea and you have a bit of rosacea peeking through a bit of that redness, it kind of can look a bit more natural as well. It can look a little bit more like blush, like that flushed look. So you guys can, you know, rock that look on. You can rock it. Because acne is such a natural part of life. Like, one of you guys commented it was so beautiful. You said, like, you know, society has made us feel like acne is not, you know, something to hide away from to be very you know insecure about but really it's up to us if we decide to be like if we decide to hate it or not like we can choose to just love it it's part of us just for now we're going through it. it's not going to be forever just love ourselves because really at the end of the day like when we when we do get rid of the acne we're going to find something else that we don't like about ourselves so instead of just going when i have no acne i'll be happy so I'd be happy now. Anyways, that's my little spiel. So I'm just going to set my face in place with this setting spray right here. This Urban Decay one that I used before. You guys can, again, like I said, you can use your own setting spray, whatever you have at home. So this concludes my non-cakey natural acne foundation routine. So I hope you guys got a lot out of it, got a few tips, got a few tricks you can apply at home. I'll be right back with my full makeup look in a minute. And I forgot to come back and end this video. So, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure to give it a big like and subscribe before you leave so you guys can keep up to date with my latest videos and tutorials. Otherwise, have an amazing day and I'll see you in my next tutorial. Bye, guys.